Hello there, this is Shadowbox, and I kinda hate game controllers. What even is there to say about these awful inventions? Just look at them. Rubbish, imprecise, flimsy, plastic excuses for an input method. They either always drift or break, and they're impossible to repair, so they just end up in landfill. Recently, I thought, I should just make my own controller. It can't be too hard, can it? So, I want to make a game controller, but I've got no idea how to actually make a game controller, so maybe I should look it up. After I did some research, I found out that I needed something called a microcontroller, and I promise, it's not what you think. I'm not cheating by using a tiny pre-made controller, it's actually just a little processor that I can program and then use it to control a circuit. Now I need to pick a microcontroller, but there are tons of them, so which should I get? In the end I just picked a random one, and that was the Raspberry Pi Pico. It turns out that I made a good decision with this one, as apparently it's pretty powerful and I can do a lot of it. To actually make the electronic part of the controller, I needed some electronics, so I bought the cheapest electronics kit on Amazon. Spoiler, don't do this. So, I have something to show you. They've arrived! Oh, and my hands. At least, I think these ones are my hands. As someone who uses Reddit too much would say, they're not much, but they're mine and we're going to need them to assemble this circuit. There is a tiny issue with that though. To make this, we need to know about electronics, but I don't actually know much about electronics. I do know someone who does know a bit about electronics though. Yo, can you tell me how electronics work? No. Well, it looks like I'm doing this by myself. Time to do some research. Actually, I'm just kidding. I'm just gonna plug everything in and see what happens. Nothing can go wrong, right? Why can I smell burning? I've got this breadboard, which you really shouldn't cut bread on. I can plug wires and components into it, and electricity flows around so you can connect everything. And conveniently, I've also got some components. So now, we can start making everything. Let's go! So, let's test everything and see if we can do the most basic thing in electronics, lighting up an LED. Oh, and it isn't working. I've tried everything. The breadboard worked, the microcontroller worked, all of the components that I haven't broken work, and I'm so confused. And then, I realised. To actually make the electronic part of the controller, I needed some electronics, so I bought the cheapest electronics kit on Amazon. The cheap breadboard wasn't built well enough, and my microcontroller couldn't properly fit into the slots on it. This wasn't that bad though, because I had some wires that I could use to connect to the pins on the controller, and then I hooked it up that way. With that sorted, now it works! Finally, we have an LED lit, powered by our microcontroller, so we can start programming. Because the Pi Pico is just that good, we don't even need to program in assembly like the super old microcontrollers. We don't even need to program in C or C++ like some modern microcontrollers. We can program this one in Python. Normally I would choose C++, but Python in this situation makes life a lot easier, as there are loads of easy to use libraries that I can use to allow it to interface with my computer. With a tiny bit of Python code, we can make the LED flash on and off, which is a really good example of how we can control voltages. Now we've got an output, I want to detect an input, which should hopefully be pretty simple because I can just run a wire into the Pico and measure the voltage. I've done that, and now we can check on the computer when an input is coming in. And so now I just need to write some software in order to receive that data from my PC, and perform some actions based on that. I also made it so that I could send data from the microcontroller to my PC using a Python script, which will hopefully come in handy later. Now I can play games with a controller that I built myself, but that isn't really that interesting. That's why I'm going to build a custom game for this controller, and we're going to add some interesting features to the hardware. I mean, it's actually pretty cool. I think I'm going to make a fighting game, but this fighting game's going to have a twist. Whenever I get hurt, the controller gives me a strong electric shock. But you don't need to worry, Mr. YouTube Video Reviewer. This is highly dangerous, and should only be performed by trained professionals. I would never... Well, that was a mistake. For some reason, I think we might need a different unique feature for the controller. I've been thinking a lot about a mini console called the Playdate recently, and it has a really cool crank you can use as an input. Now, because I can't really be bothered putting in any actual engineering effort, we're just going to add a little turny thing and use that in place of the crank, but the idea is pretty similar. The idea is that your arm is controlled by the crank, and you turn that to attack the enemy. From there, I started programming the game in Unity. I made some 2D characters that were controlled with inverse kinematics, which is a way of setting up bones and making animations a lot easier, and it's really cool. 
I then set up a way of getting some input from the crank and then processing input from the controller to move the player. After that I made some really, really stupid AI and set up a damage and health system. And now I could play a game that I made with a controller that I also made, which is pretty cool. Thanks a lot for watching the video. I'd love if you liked it and subscribed. I'm trying to work on cooler projects all the time, which is why these videos keep taking so long. Check out my Discord, which is linked in the description. And I also have a really cool game called Propulsion that you can check out on Steam. Have a good day.